Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech and our continuing coverage of Intel's desktop board, the DZ77-70K. Uh, we're taking a look at it here. Of course, we have our Core i7-3770K CPU in here. It's normally going to run at 3.5 gigahertz. We have it at its maximum right now of 4.8 gigahertz. We've tried to push it over this limit, but we haven't been able to get too much farther. But right now what we're actually going to take a look at, uh, we'll discuss the performance particulars in a little, a little bit later, we're going to take a look at the Intel Visual BIOS. This is the still just an extension of the UEFI, but it's got a nice clean look to it. Intel really wanted to make sure that this was easy to use, that you have plenty of functionality in here, and you really do. I mean, if you want to just you know drag and drop whatever you want to be your first primary boot device, you can do that. So it's got a lot of uh, nice features here on this sort of intro screen. This is your basic screen. If you want to change your clock speeds or anything like that, you literally just drag this back and forth and it's going to change anything here. You can also look at the graphics performance, the memory, all of that. And you can move back and forth into your performance monitor to take a look at exactly what's going on with this device and also your different port connections. You can see right here it's going to tell us exactly what's in that first um, slot. It's going to continue to scroll back and forth. This is really a nice performance monitor. It's very visual. It's, it's at a glance. You can take a look and see exactly what's going on very quickly. And we like this feature of this BIOS. We know that there are other companies that have similar features, but this is just a great one that we can uh, definitely say is a uh, step up from what we've seen from other BIOSes from Intel. You can also take a look at the SATA devices, um, kind of scroll in and see exactly what's in each one. And right here you're going to see it scroll across and tell you where it's at. And as you highlight these, it's going to focus exactly on the port where these are at. So we'll go ahead and move on. Here's some system information. We're not getting a whole lot of information here because there's no strings. We don't have a chassis plugged in. Um, all you're pretty much going to see is your the CPU and the desktop board information. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click over here and we're going to take a look at the advanced configuration. This is exactly what it says. This is the rest of the information in the background that you don't see when you're using that easy mode. So we see here on the main screen, you can see what the processor signature is, how much L2 cache, the CPU itself. You can set the date and the time very quickly. And of course, you have a nice little visual representation. And of course, it's Friday the 13th. Um, hopefully, we'll have good luck for the rest of the day. Uh, and again, you have your memory information. You can set up your event logging, all of that. Devices and peripherals. I'm going to come over here and show you any USB devices you have plugged in, your SATA configuration, uh, video settings. Now, a lot of this video settings that you see here are going to be for the IGP, the one that's actually on the processor, not necessarily any add-in cards. These are still important because with the Virtue MVP software, it's going to allow you to still utilize the capabilities that are in that IGP and an add-in card, but it's just going to focus them as to what it's going to be used for, such as media encoding, audio encoding, things like that. So you're going to get the benefit of the CPU's parallel processing in that IGP, as well as the frame rates that you're going to uh, that you want from your add-in card. And you know we've talked about that before. We saw the same thing in Sandy Bridge. So we're going to take a look. Here's a, a nice little cooling monitor. This is your real-time monitoring. You saw this in the easy mode as well. This is just a much larger screen. And it's going to let you kind of drill down into each of the individual things. You can set up your uh, over, over temperature thresholds, your voltage thresholds, all of that. Here is the advanced screen for your overclocking. Um, it says once you push the processor beyond, of course, you violate your warranty. You know that. You can do your fail-safe watchdog, set up your host clock frequency. And then you can see uh, sort of what's going on right here. And you can see what we've got set up, which is our, uh, our active one is our 4.8 gigahertz uh, overclock. And here you see what we've done to get this stable. And when we first set this up, we used some of Intel's recommendations. Uh, they were quite uh, extreme, as you'll see in our write-up, uh, which is at the link below. But it still did allow us to get to 4.8. We started backing that off just to make sure that we were covered for temperatures as Ivy Bridge, uh, the i7-3770K, does get hot very quickly. It has a higher uh, TJ Maxx which is at 105C, but you still don't want to be in that range. You'll start getting errors in processing and you lose stability once you get towards that upper end of the heat. Uh, fortunately, we do have good cooling with our Epic 180, but even with that, we were still seeing some heat fluctuations that we didn't like. Our memory is still set at the uh, at 1600 megahertz. Now, the desktop board here has default um, has a default setting for 1600 megahertz as long as the JDEC specification of your memory 
is set to 1600 megahertz. What this means is when you drop it in, there's a small device on there called an SPD or serial presence device. If that is set to the JDEC specification for 1600 megahertz operation, this board will automatically pick it up and run at that speed. 99% of your memory on the market, as a matter of fact, I, I, would, I would go so far as to say all of your memory on the market, the JDEC specification listed in the default SPD profile is going to be 1333 megahertz as far as performance RAM for this type of setup. You do have RAM that's going to be much lower. But even with RAM that says it's, it's set up to work at 2400 megahertz or 2800 megahertz or whatever, its default JDEC spec in that SPD is going to be 1333. So for a while, at least until people like G-Skill, Corsair, and Kingston come out with their 1600 megahertz JDEC spec RAM, you're still going to have to bump this up and use a manual specification or an extended memory profile. Alright, we'll take a look at our graphics here. This is the default graphics. We haven't gotten into overclocking the, the IGP on this. Uh, we may get into that a little bit later, but we haven't done that on this particular board. But it's still nice. You can see it's very visual. Pretty much just slide things back and forth here. Um, which is nice for entry level to sort of mid-range people that just want to get a quick overclock and make sure that they don't have to worry about setting all the other settings that would drop into place to make it stable. Alright, the security tab. You can set up a password. You can set up security options for chassis intrusion, the virtualization technology, which right now is turned off. Um, well, actually turned on, you have your VT for direct I.O. or virtualized direct access. This is only going to be beneficial if you're going to run this as a virtualized box and you need those applications to have direct access to the hardware or direct access to input-output devices like hard drives. Nine times out of ten, just go ahead and leave that turned off unless you're setting this up as a virtualization system. Here we have our power settings. They're, again, they're very clean. One of the things we do want you to notice is how quickly the response is to mouse movements and how quickly the response is to clips. This is one of our biggest complaints with the majority of the UEFI BIOSes out there with perhaps the exception of ASUS. You click on something, it may take it a second to register, you may have to click two and three times, or you have to click in a very small little window in order to activate these controls. On the Intel Visual BIOS that we're seeing here on the DZ7770K, it's running, you know, it's, it's very responsive and we like that. All right, your boot options here, you can see they're very easy and of course if you want to change your boot order, you can just flip and flop things, You uh, USB optimization for booting, all of that. You have a lot of different options here, most of which you'll never use. Boot display options, do you want to you know, ask it if you want to boot from an expansion card, things like that. They're all here. And then of course you have your load BIOS defaults and exit. And down at the bottom you have some hotkeys, F10 to save, F9 to load your defaults, escape to get out of something, uh, tab will take you to the next option, enter. Pretty much uh, you know, all the things that you want. And of course you can hit Alt which should reveal all of your shortcut keys. But we're not seeing, there's none on this screen, so we're not getting in. You can also search the BIOS. So let's say we want to do voltage. We hit that and it's going to pop up anything that has to do with voltage and it has the word voltage in it. This is a very nice feature that we like on this BIOS because we were looking for some specific things such as we wanted to see if there were any other options for PLL and here you can see it's going to pop up everything that is relating to PLL on this board. The same thing with thermal controls. You just quickly type it in and hit search. Now in this case, nothing's popping up for thermal. So there's no settings in here that use the word thermal. So, but as we back up, you can see here that it's going to show things as we type things in, which is very nice. It's a very quick search feature, and we definitely like this. We hope to see this in, in some other systems as we start to test more and more of these boards. So that wraps it up for the D77GA70K board from Intel. Um, this will be in conjunction with our coverage of Ivy Bridge, as well as uh, we hope more than a few Z77 chipset-based motherboards out there. For right now, we can say that it looks like Intel has sort of set the standard for what this visual bio should look like moving forward. And uh, it's definitely one that we like, and it's going to be one of our, our recommended BIOSes. We hope to see other manufacturers take this. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. Share this with your friends on Facebook and on the rest of the Internet. And be sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to stay up to date on the videos and news that we have for you.